guess maybe how clean should the cap table be? Um, care, the importance of carry, you know, that kind of thing. Yep. Totally. I mean, the cap table, you should keep it as clean as possible, but that's also not very useful um, because, you know, again, you do every, like I was, saying, everyone does what they got to do to get the job done, you know? And like, if you got to scrap money together from random people to get it done, you're going to do that. And you should, you know, and, and being pure about the cap table is absolutely the last thing to do, you know, like grab the money and stay alive. That's always the goal. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's the most important thing. Now, that being said, like when you have the choice, I think the thing to remember is just these people on the cap table forever. You know, and like chasing people for signatures is a fucking nightmare, you know, and like, it's just annoying as fuck to have to do that on a regular basis. Every time the funding around like, just FYI, there's a docu sign, please send this thing, please sign it. Or like the wire hasn't come through. Like, it's just a whole thing, you know? So I think you want to keep it easy. You want to keep it simple. I think we went from the phase of mostly VCs on cap tables to then mostly to then VCs and a huge slew of angels to now being, I think, a cleaner structure, which is mostly VCs, and then um, a few angels, but rolled up, whether it's into a syndicate, whether it's in one of the, you know, the angelist roll-up thing, like whether it's one fund or whatever. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There's a lot of ways to keep it simple. So for you, you still get the upside of having to engage with all of them and having those folks behind you and supporting you, but also not having to do the admin work of dealing with 70,000 on, you know, like with a bunch of people on the cap table. So I, I think that that's like, that's what I think about it. I think, that's the first thing. I think the second thing is like the one question to ask yourself around who's raising money is who is going to write you that second check? You know, like, I think that's the most important thing. Nothing is ever perfect. And if it is, God bless you, you know, and I'm proud. And I, I you know, I wish I was as good. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not. And most of the founders and, and a lot of people I meet are not that way. And there, there are stumbles. And the question is always when things go wrong and I need an extra year or two of cash, who's going to give you that money? without hassling you and understanding the journey. That's when the that's when that's when a venture investor really shines, I think, and the right person can really shine. And so that's just the thing to remember. The angel of syndicate will not be there for you. That's the reality. Letting them on is a good thing though. I'm not saying don't because I'm part of many like I for my own reason I think it's a good thing. But like that that is just not like as as a real partner to the business of I need I need two million bucks now, you know, because like I need to make payroll. You know, like they the syndicate will not be there for you, you know. And so you just, just remember that. And I think that's the one thing to remember. There's just, just understand the, the pros and cons of both. I think they're very useful combined, but I think people lean really hard into like VCs are bad. Like I'm only raising angel money and they forget that like, this is a 10 year journey. And those angels are like in many ways, fair weather fans, you know? Um, and then on the other side, um, you know, being pure VCs also, cause like, look, VCs are not necessarily really value add. You know, so like understanding the other side and understanding to get real operational experience, we're going to jump in and help you on real decisions is also useful. So just use both those accordingly. I think you'll be, and, and it should be, it should be good.